Hello all, welcome to Beginners Biology. In this video, let's discuss about histotypic cultures. In histotypic cultures, the growth and propagation of cell lines occurs in three-dimensional matrix, thereby creating a in vitro tissue morphologies. Basically, there are three types of histotypic culture techniques. They are gel and sponge technique, hollow fiber technique, and spirage technique. In gel and sponge technique, the cells in the culture can penetrate gel or sponges which provides a matrix for morphogenesis of primitive cells. This approach has been used for the development of mammary epithelium and some cubular and granular structures. Now let's see the hollow fiber technique. In recent years, perfusion chambers with a bed of plastic capillary fibers have been developed after gel and sponge technique. The advantage of using hollow fiber technique over gel and sponge technique is that the nutrient and gas exchange is more efficient. As the cells attach to the capillary fibers, they grow. There occurs an increase in the cell density to form tissue-like structures. The image on the left depicts the hollow fiber tube along with the medium saturated with 5% CO2 in air that is pumped it through the centers of the capillaries and the cells are added to the outer chamber surroundings to the bundle of the fibers. The hollow fiber technique is an ideal system for studying the synthesis and release of biopharmaceuticals and are now being exploited on semi-industrial scale. For example, many workers claim that the behavior of high density cells formed on hollow fibers is comparable to their in vivo behavior. In instance, choriocarcinoma cells grown in hollow fiber cultures release more chorionic gonadotropin than in conventional monolayer. Coming to the three dimensional cultures in histotypic culture, it constitutes spheroids. Spheroids are cluster of cells formed by reassociation of dissociated culture cells. Spheroids have the ability to sort out themselves into groups to form tissue like architecture. The basic principle of using spheroids in histotypic culture is that the cells in heterotypic or homotypic aggregates are capable of sorting themselves out. The major drawback of spheroids is that its limitation of diffusion of nutrients and gases. Coming to the method of spheroid production, the single cell suspensions are obtained from trypsinization of monolayer cells or disaggregated tumor. These trypsinized cells are inoculated into the medium in the magnetic stirrer. The image of magnetic stirrer is shown in the left. So after inoculation, the cells are incubated in the medium for about 3 to 5 days. And then the aggregates of cells representing spheroids are formed. After the spheroids are formed, they are transferred to 24 well plate for analysis. Spheroid growth is quantified by measuring their dimensions regularly. It can also be measured by using a microscope. Coming to the application of spheroids, spheroids serve as a models for vascular tumor growth. They are also helpful to study certain disease processes and for the development of gene therapies and evaluate radiation effect. They are also used for the development of tissue and tissue models. Coming to the advantages of histotypic culture, the dispersed monolayers can be used to generate tissue-like structures, but the spheroid culture provides a well-defined geometry to study several biological processes. So these two advantages put forth the histotypic cultures in tissue engineering thank you for watching the video kindly comment in the comment section and tell me which biology topic you want me to go over with if you like the video hit the like button and share it for more content from beginners biology turn the notification symbol on thank you